Good morning. You're not on. Morning. No. Oh. Ooh, now it's on. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Let's stand up and let's do one of my very favorite songs. Did you do that, Kevin, or did I change it? Ready? <laughs> had a tree nothing, nothing is impossible everybody join julie imagine if a man took away nothing is impossible people laugh it can't be done man's not meant to fly their little dream changed everything they dared to touch the I cannot sing and clap. I even tried it on my hip and I was like, oh yeah, it's just not working. So thank you, Julie. <laughs> and, and I appreciate that as well. Oh, wow. Nothing is impossible. And you were born to shine. You were born to shine. Joanne, how wonderful to see you. Yeah, great. So which of you is Nancy? Welcome, Nancy. And your friend is? Corrine, happy to have you with us this morning. Thank you so much. And um, would you get them newcomer packets? Thank you. If you just fill out the blue card and throw it in the offering basket when it's presented, that would be super. Okay. Welcome, welcome. So here we are at Unity Center. And Unity is a new thought church, which means we're teaching all of the stuff that Jesus taught. So it's not new thought. It's new in the way that we understand the teachings of our master teacher, Jesus. Am I cutting out? Okay. All right. Moving right along. So um, this is a place that is a safe place to grow and to explore your spirituality. And we say sometimes that we are spiritually progressive, that we are socially responsive and that we are radically inclusive. No one is ever left out. Everyone is welcome. Regardless of what your spiritual path is, we bless you on that path. So let's begin with our statement of faith. There's only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotence. And the affirmation for our center Thank you, God, that we have come to this place to release the past 
celebrate the present and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony, and prosperity. Our prayer for racial healing. We are here because we care. We are here because you care. We are here because I care. Let me be the peace and act the peace. Let us move our hearts to the highest and best of us and focus on racial healing for self, others, and the world. In unity, through the name of Christ, amen. So this is the first Sunday of the new month. And before we do, now we'll do a prayer request because they're here. Okay, so here's how we do the prayer request. You can say the first name of the person we're going to pray with, and then you speak the desired result. So it could be Bobby for healing. It could be Susie for employment. It could be so-and-so for harmony. It could be so-and-so for something else. You speak the, the desired outcome. We don't need the story and we want no last names, okay? Because this is going out <laughs> into TV land. And we do have to respect people's privacy. So are there any prayer requests this morning? Yes, Sue. Okay. Okay. Ron. Yes, Elise. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, Lynn, prayer for healing and success. Okay. Yes, please. Christy for employment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sean and Keith? P. P. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's a pretty long list. But I'm grateful and happy that we have each other to hold these things in prayer, to lift people up. And it's very important. So will you join me in an attitude of prayer? And as we move into prayer, we close our outer eyes. 
we turn within to that quiet place that we know so well. That's that place of peace, that place of unconditional love. It is the meeting place with God through the divine of our own being, our own Christ nature. God knows that we have need of even before we ask, and we ask affirming that which is already so in the mind and the activity of God. For Nancy, for Aaron, for Megan, for Terry, for another Nancy and Frank and Carolyn, for Ken, for Lynn, for Virginia and Denise, for David, for Regina. We hold each of these dear ones in the light and the life of God, knowing that God life is in every cell and atom of their being. Every organ, every system of their being is filled with God life. God's wisdom is also present and God wisdom guides and directs the healing life to do its perfect work of renewing, regenerating, revitalizing, making whole, well, and free each of these dear ones. And for this healing, we say, thank you, God. For Diane and Ron, who are celebrating their birthdays, we bless them richly with all the love that is in our hearts and all the God love that surrounds them and fills them both. We see this birthday time as a time of great celebration, of expectation for the goodness that is coming with this new year of life. For Nancy, Frank, and Caroline, we know that God's harmony is present in mind, in heart, in spirit. It surrounds them, it enfolds them, but most of all, it comes from within them. This harmony is restored. They interact with kindness, with love, and with the generosity of spirit. And we say, thank you, God. For Lynn, let her know acceptance, acceptance for herself and acceptance for others. We are all one family of God and each of us is an expression of the divine. May we know that truth about ourselves and may we know it for others. And in this knowing, we are grateful and we are kind. Kind to ourselves and kind to others. And so it is. For Christy, we know that the perfect right opportunity is preparing itself for her as she is seeking it. It presents itself as the perfect job, the perfect way. It comes on the perfect day at the perfect pay. And we say, thank you, God, that this is so. For Mary Beth and Anita, we celebrate with them their anniversary, knowing that this day is a day of great happiness. It is a time of joyous expectation for their new year of life together. And we know that God has surely blessed them in the past and is blessing them, raining blessings down on them now. And we say, thank you, God, that this is so. For Sean and P, we bless them knowing that they experience the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit moves in and through them and all around them, that the Holy Spirit lifts them up to their own realization of their personal divinity. And that Holy Spirit also is present with all those with whom they interact, and with whom they live. And for all of these prayer requests and the many more that have been held silently in hearts and minds, we know that God hears everyone. And in this knowing, we say, thank you. Thank you, God, that all is accomplished in your perfect timing. And so it is. Amen. I've asked Sue Nevla to share the reading of the Daily Word today.
Today's word is radiance. The Christ presence within is my radiant source of good. On a clear day when I, a stray cloud passes across the sun, I notice the suddenly diminished light. Then looking up, I see brilliant rays of sunshine surrounding the cloud. Instead of hiding the sun, the cloud helps me see and appreciate the sun's radiance. As the sun lights the earth and is the source of its energy, the Christ, the divine presence within me is my light and the source of everything that I need in order to live brilliantly and joyfully. When like a passing cloud, an obstacle or challenge along my path may seem to dim my Christ's light, I respond by looking up, by raising my point of view. I am reassured and strengthened knowing that the divine radiance is shining as brightly as ever. No cloud can dim the divine light in me. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. John 1, Five. This morning, Reverend Mary asked me to share a little, a testimony, I guess more so I would say my spiritual journey. I appreciate friends being here. They've been part of that spiritual journey. I grew up Missouri Synod Lutheran. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That is very true. I grew up God-fearing and knowing that I had to be saved from sin. When I was 21 years old, I lost seven hours of my life in an alcohol blackout. And I looked back and I thought, well, I think this has happened to me before. I blacked out many, many times all the way back to my high school days. And I was aware nothing ever happened to me. And then I was overcome with the love and the care of someone more powerful than me, someone who had been watching me all those years. I was overcome with the love of God. And as I described it, that I had lost my life in those seven hours, I was so wrong. Life had found me. I had found God's love and care for me. And I was so overwhelmed in wanting to give my life back, wanting to do something for others, that I thought I could dedicate my life to God. So I turned Catholic, because you know, turning Catholic is the answer of everything, <laughs> or so it seemed, and entered a religious order to give my life back to God, dedicated to others in service, and to grow in a deeper relationship with God. However, after 13 years, I discovered it was not the path that God was asking me to follow. However, I did receive one very, very precious gift of that experience, and that is my beautiful and loving wife. Yeah. That lifestyle, though, left us with a missing part, and that is a sense of community, a sense of a group sharing the love of God, sharing that experience of being whole. So we sort of looked around, shopped around. More so, we found a group of women at the time that gathered for prayer once a month, whose members were of different faiths, of different beliefs, 
And we came to find that when we shared the belief, the way that each individual experienced God, it was so much more. Finding that God touches us in so many different ways, in so many different experiences, that we need to do that with one another more often than we do. All of these experiences has led us to here now in unity. And we have found a faith community that is open to those differences, open to bringing together based on prayer, on service to one another and service for ourselves. We have found a community that affirms the God within. And we like to say, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are so grateful. We are blessed. Thank you, Sue. Wow, how powerful. Thank you. <sighs> this is our opportunity to have a musical gift from Julie and from Linda. Well, can you get her in the picture or not? I don't know. It's okay. It's really okay. <laughs> She's okay with it. I'm not tall enough to actually see through it, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay. A little farther toward Linda. Okay. <laughs> Got a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts that changes things that shape my life. The thoughts I have the power to change my life. <clears throat> if you ask me, who am I? I am wisdom, I am life. I am more than meets the eye. I cannot be defined. I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts, it changes things. Shape my life. I am a thinker who thinks the thoughts I have the power to change my life. If you ask me, what am I? I am beauty, I am joy, I am more than meets the eye. I cannot be defined. Sing this with me. I am the thinker who thinks the thought that changes, changes things that shape my life. I am the thinker who thinks that I have the power, the power to change my life. I can choose to be the light that brightens someone's darkest night. So much more than beats the eye. I cannot be defined. I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts that changes things that shape my life. I am the thinker who thinks the thoughts I have the power to change my life. I have the power to change my life. I have the power to change my life.
So today I'm starting a series on the wisdom of Rumi. And it's kind of interesting because someone called during the week, she's here today, Nancy and her friend. Um, and she said, uh, I understand that you're going to be talking about Rumi on Sunday. And I said, yeah, she said, well, I live in Greenfield and I'm thinking, okay, who do I know in Greenfield that would have told her? <laughs> Greendale, Greendale. And it turns out um, it was Carol, who's the grandpa to all the kids. Do you remember Carol? Big, tall, white, yeah, white haired guy. Yeah. Okay. So they were not <laughs> by, by the email thing. He told her in the pet store, which I found quite lovely. So the question is, how often do you tell people? How often do you talk about unity? Do you tell people about where you're going and what's happening? Kind of, kind of an interesting concept, isn't it? So just who do you think you are? Just who do you think you are? Now, if you've ever been on the receiving end of that in that tone of voice, raise your hand. Yeah, most of us, most of us. And when it was said that way, it was not encouraging us to bloom, was it? It was much more about, you better know your place. You better know your place. Um, it was always about taking us down a peg or two. So I want to talk to you this morning about who we really are. And I want to talk to you from the, the vantage point of a mystic. And the mystic is Rumi. Rumi was a 13th century Sufi mystic. Now, if you know anything about Sufism, you know that this is the very mystical arm of the Islamic faith. And the Sufis are very much um, concerned with the nature of God, the nature of being. They are, um, they are much more into the mystical teaching. And if you actually get right down to it, the teaching is much more like the understanding and the teachings of unity and certainly our master teacher, Jesus. But it's, you don't get the mystical teachings of Jesus very much in the synoptic gospels that we know, the four gospels in the, in the scripture. It's more like in the gospel of Thomas in the Gnostic gospels that you get more of that mysticism. So who do you think you are anyway? The very way that we answer that question in part is identified by how we, we identify ourselves. So we may identify ourselves as well. Um, I am of German ancestry and I grew up in the Midwest and I was lived on a farm and we had, it was a dairy farm. And you identify yourself that way. Well, okay, that, that's good as far as it goes. So you could say, well, I grew up in the city I, I never had a chance to have a lawn to mow, but I guess it's okay. Um, and you, you, you identify in a different way, but all of those are very limiting. I might even say they could be wrong. They could be wrong because who you think you are is owning the truth of your being, that you are a spiritual being that you are a spiritual being. All of those things that we say, well, I was the daughter of this or the umpteenth child of so-and-so or the mother of so-and-so or I did this, that, or the other thing. Those are things that we identify with, but that's not who we are. That's not who we are. So I would like you to hear the answer from a Sufi mystic. And you know what? The answer is very similar to the answer that Dr. Vijay talked about last week. The answer that Jesus has been spoken about many times in scripture. But this is one of my favorite definitions from Rumi. He said, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. Now that's pretty powerful when you think about it. We say every single time that we're together, we are the beloved offspring of the divine. We forget that as that offspring, we have that divinity within us. It's here. We have it. We don't have to go looking. But the truth of the matter is, 
we do look. We look for God in all the wrong places, all the wrong faces. And um, if you think about it, you're not a drop in the ocean, but you are the ocean in a drop. Do you ever get that feeling when you're out in nature, maybe looking across the lake, maybe at night looking at the sky and you go, wow, it's so big. And I'm just one little speck on this actually smaller planet in this huge universe. Well, I'm really not much at all. But the truth of this is you are everything that God is. You are in potential. You have the seeds of all the attributes of God within you all the time. That's what we call our 12 powers. I actually think there's a lot more than 12, but the 12 that Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, talks about. So all that God is, all that spirit is, all that the divine is, is you, in you right now. Not just some of us, not just those who look like us or those who, who think like us or those who vote the same way. Yeah, we have to include that one in there too, I know. But um, everyone, every, every sentient being is a part of God. My favorite Unity author, who is Eric Butterworth, said, God is in you as the ocean is in the wave. You're not the entire ocean, but all that is in the ocean is in you. All that is in God is in you. Rumi says you were born with potential. You were born with goodness and trust. You were born with ideals and dreams. You were born with greatness. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Do you believe that about yourself? Well, your amen was a little stronger than here. Yes. <laughs> Do you believe that about yourself? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So you were born with potential. You were born with goodness. You were born with ideals and dreams. You were born with greatness. Can you imagine just for a moment, what would our world be like if every child on planet Earth was given that message from their earliest first moments of drawing breath. Can you imagine what our world would be like? Well, there'd be peace. There'd be peace on earth. There'd be harmony. We might even experience heaven on earth if we all practice that belief. We wouldn't be trying to put round pegs into square holes or maybe I'm seeing it the wrong way. Well, anyways, we wouldn't have been trying to do that stuff. We would have been celebrating the uniqueness of every individual and just think of how great that would be, how exciting that would be. If I said to you, you are God in expression, what would you say? Amen. <laughs> Give that girl a gold star. All right. All right. You got it. You got it. Now, I have to tell you, when you get it, you got to use it. You can't just say, I got it, but I don't feel like it today. Marianne Williamson had a long quote. I'm just going to give you a little piece of it. She says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is not our light. Pardon me, erase that. It is our light, not our darkness that frightens us most. It is our light that frightens us most. Why? Why would light, our personal light, why would that frighten us? What do we do with it? What do we do with it? Exactly. Once we know we have it, you can't really mess around too much. You know, when I didn't know, it was okay because I, I could live in this land of denial. I could say, well, all my problems are out there. You know, you, you folks, you folks are my problems if you would just do it my way, you know? But once you know, I have not only that light, I have that divinity, I have 
the seeds of greatness. I have the potential of everything. You know, you, you start walking a different way. And I mean that sincerely. You walk in a different way. You walk with more confidence. You have a spiritual poise that allows you to let that light shine, to let it shine. Now, you know that you were not born in original sin. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You were born in original blessing. You were born perfect. You were born with no hint of a flaw. Do you know that to be true? Yes. Some of you do. I'm hoping that more of you will come into that light of knowing that you were born right the first time. Now, don't let that go to your head. <laughs> and don't let that make you get lazy thinking I don't have to do anything else. No. When you know you have the opportunity to stretch and grow. When you know you have the ability to stretch and grow. That's the truth. That is the absolute truth. Now, I don't know about you, but let me just tell you some of the things that Rumi says we are. You are a manuscript of a divine letter. You are a mirror reflecting a noble face. You are a volume in the divine book. You are a mirror image of the power that created the universe. I don't know about you, but these are some pretty awesome words. These are the words of a 13th century mystic telling us, really telling us who we are, what we really are. And when we live from that knowing, we live from our own seeds of greatness. We live from our own seeds of greatness. Now, it doesn't make us boastful. It does not in any way change our humility but it is there to remind us that this is the truth of our being. The second idea that Rumi invites us into is if this is so of who we are, that the entire ocean in the drop is us, then how are we meant to live? How are we meant to live? We will live differently when we own this about ourselves and when we own this for each other. But how will we live? Rumi says, stop acting so small. This is my favorite part. You are the universe in ecstatic motion. The universe in ecstatic motion. Do you know what ecstatic is? I mean, it is joy beyond joy. It is, it is thrilling. It is a, it is a, a vibration that is so high. No, you don't go around laughing and singing. Well, you could, but I mean, through your day, probably not. But if you live in that knowingness, there is something in you that will shine. How many of you grew up with that phrase, don't get too big for your britches? Okay, so I guess we're kind of in the same culture growing up. The other one was uh, children are meant to be seen and not. Oh, yeah. yeah you, you, you went there, too. But those phrases are not about who we are, and they're not the place that we belong in. Stop acting small. You are the universe in ecstatic motion. What does it look like when we stop playing small? I think it can look like many things. One is that I believe we stop waiting to be asked to share our ideas. We share them respectfully. Now, we don't share our ideas and our thoughts and our hopes to make anybody else wrong. That's not what it's about. But it is about owning who we are, owning what we have to give. Stop waiting to voice your thoughts and beliefs and truths. We start sharing them. 
we start sharing them. We own our understanding and we stop playing small so others won't be threatened. I don't know about you, but I have had the experience in my life where I purposely diminished who I was and how I showed up so that someone else would be more comfortable. Anybody ever do that? That's, it's amazing that we do that. It's amazing that we do that. It is really kind of hard. When we stop playing small and we start playing to who we really are, we're gonna help lift everyone else up with it. There's an expression, I don't remember it exactly, somebody can correct me, but something like, a rising tide lifts all boats or something like that. That's it? That's it? The rising tide lifts all boats. So in other words, as we live more and more of the high vibration that we are, we lift up people and experiences and situations around us. And I say experiences and situations because the difference that happens when we are coming from the high vibration of our truth is almost magical. It is almost magical. It changes everything around us and everyone around us. When we stop acting small and we start owning our own grandeur, we're an inspiration to others to do the same. We don't help anyone by shrinking down from who we are or what we have to give. And aren't you glad that when Julie sang and Linda played, they gave it their all because it blessed us. It lifted us up by them giving their all. When Kathy leads us on Sunday morning, she's not always excited about it. I think she'd rather stayed in bed sometimes, <laughs> but she gets up, she gets here and she gives it her all. And as a consequence, we sing better, don't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, particularly the last line, nothing is impossible. We get it. So when you give what is yours to give, when you give in your own unique way, you're helping to inspire others. And it's true that you might, let me clean that up a little bit. It's true that you might irritate some people, yeah. but you know, that's okay. That's their problem, it's not yours. You are being who you are designed, who you are called, who you truly are, who you truly are. Rumi says this, I love this. You were born with wings, so don't crawl. Learn to use those wings and fly. Stop crawling and stop groveling. And much do I have to admit it, regardless of whatever your family's church of origin was, we all had a lot of guilt dumped on us. I don't care for the covering Catholics, those from the Missouri Senate Luther, I, all of us, all of us pretty much had a lot of guilt dumped on us. And that was a controlling behavior by someone who thought it was a good idea way back when. Let me remind you again, you are not born in original sin. You are born with original blessing. Unity minister Sue Sicking used to have this expression. I thought it was really great. The largest room in the universe is the room for personal improvement. I think she's right. It doesn't mean that um, we look at ourselves or at anyone else in the world as fundamentally flawed. Get this, we are not, we are not. Because when we do that, we put everybody down, including ourselves, we hold each other back. Jesus said, know ye not that ye are gods. I believe he meant that. He didn't say, know that you are God. We're God's small g, Godettes, Godlings. We are growing in our expression of our divinity. We are growing in our spiritual understanding and in our spiritual maturity. That's what it's all about. The third question that Rumi answers is of who do you think you are is about where to look, where to look. Stop looking outside yourself. 
Rumi says, you wander from room to room, hunting for the diamond necklace that is already around your neck. We've all done that with one thing or another, haven't we? You're, you're, we're always looking outside. That was one of the points that our guest speaker last week was making about the kingdom of heaven. It's about, it's, it's within, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within. It's hard for us to get it sometimes that what we seek is what we are. What we seek is what we are. <clears throat> looking for the divinity what is the best tool for looking within meditation, meditation. gold star <laughs> i was going to say i don't ask you about it if you do it every day but yes meditation we need to honor the silence and honor the stillness we need to get back to that quiet place so that we can get in touch with the divine within. We need to get back to that place of silence and quiet in meditation so we can get in touch with the divine. Rumi says we wander from room to room looking and hunting for the diamond necklace that's already around your neck. He says it in another way. The universe is not outside of you. Look inside yourself. Everything you want, you are already that. What does he mean? It means that you cannot look at another without having at least the seed of that which you admire within yourself. So think about some of the people that you admire. They may be on another plane of life now, but, but think about the qualities that you admire. When you see those, those are the seeds, those same seeds are within you. So you don't look at them and say, oh, I'll never be like so-and-so. You look at a person and say, oh, this is my homework. This is my opportunity to learn and grow. This is my opportunity to nurture that seed of, I don't know what, um, humility, um, hospitality, whatever the seed of greatness is that you're admiring in another, that is in you in seed form now, right now. So don't compare yourself and say, oh, so-and-so is so great, you know, and I'm not, or I wish I was like that. Okay, that wishing is your, your spirit, your soul calling you to practice and nurture that within yourself. Your soul is saying to you on this journey, in this lifetime, this is what you are to harvest, that thing that you are admiring in someone else. This is what you are to harvest. This is what you are to grow. This is what you are to focus on. So you say, well, okay, here's my homework. Your soul is wanting you to develop that, to deepen that, to expand that inside. And as Rumi says, everything you want, you are already that. He says again, why are you so enchanted by the world when a mine of gold is within you. Don't keep looking at the outer. Turn within. Come back to the inner. If you really believed that, would you go searching with all your might and heart out there? I don't think so. In the, in the gospel, Jesus tells the parable about the pearl of great price. The merchant finds the pearl of great price. He sells everything to acquire the pearl of great price. So what is that to us? The pearl of great price is that divinity within. It's not about selling anything in the outer. It's about discarding the old beliefs, discarding the old thought patterns, discarding the old ways of being that no longer serve you. Now, I would like to say that I graduated from my yesterday self to my more advanced spiritual self in one day. I think it's possible. Sue had, had an experience very, very much like that, that changed her life dramatically in one day. 
I got to be honest with you and say my yesterday self comes up a lot, comes out a lot. My yesterday self is always there to tell me when I'm not measuring up, when I'm not doing it good enough, blah, 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 blah. And it really takes a lot for me to ignore that. And to, when it comes up, say, thank you for sharing. I'm setting you aside now. I mean, it's almost what I have to say out loud for my own ears to hear it, that I'm setting it aside because otherwise I can let that, that aspect of me grab the microphone in my head and just blah, 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 wow, 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 all day long. I don't want that. And neither do you. What we want is to be able to receive the goodness that is within us. We want to be able to hear it. Some people do actually hear, hear it. Some people are guided through nudges and, and hunches. Some people are guided by the words of a song, a headline, lots and lots of different ways that spirit speaks to us. So when you look inside and you find that pearl of great price, you get rid of all the trappings of all the stuff in the outer. There has never been a time, this is important, there has never been a time when you tried putting anything on the outer or adding anything to the outer, including cars, material possessions, that made you a better person. Ever. Ever. So I'm going to give you some homework. Some homework to help you remember this lesson of who do you think you are? Now, there's four possible assignments. Only pick one. Don't be an overachiever. <laughs> Just work on one. The first one is remembering who you really are, that you are God in expression. And this is your homework assignment for the whole week. So whether you're interacting with a friend, whether you're having a difficult conversation with someone, whether you're driving down the road in heavy traffic, that is the biggest earth classroom for all of us. <laughs> Um, whatever you're doing to remember who you are, that you are God in expression. Now, it's kind of helpful if you can think about that of other people as well, but you may not. But focus on your beingness, your own beingness, that you are God in expression. The second one is, kind of like the first, it's remembering who and what everyone else is. So when that person is rude to you or somebody cuts you off or somebody really doesn't give you the service that you expect, lighten up. Try to remember that they are also spiritual beings just trying to get home to God like all of us. And we don't know what's going on in their day. They don't remember who they are. So we need to remember it for them. The third one is love yourself more this week. <laughs> okay, so you say, well, how in the world am I going to do that? Well, think about how you treat your own best friend. How do you talk to your own best friend? If you're not talking to yourself the way that you talk to your own best friend, now's the time to start. Now's the time to start acknowledging yourself. You may compliment your friend on something. Think about something to look in the mirror and find something about yourself to compliment. But start loving yourself more. The fourth one is challenging yourself more. So when you have to be in a group of people, when you have to interact in some kind of a transaction that is not easy, challenge yourself to do so from that high vibration of who and what you really are. You are that expression of God. Or you can practice trusting yourself more. Trusting yourself more. Think about it. Namaste. Let's prepare for meditation. So you might wish to wiggle a little bit and get comfortable. You've been sitting still for a while. And as we turn within, we come into that quiet, quiet place. Come to a place of 
being with our own best friend, who is God. We're inviting you to know who you are today. To help you remember that you are a masterpiece. You are a work in progress. You are a powerful message and a beautiful reminder that every day starts with you and your acknowledgement of who you are. A masterpiece and a work in progress. In truth, we are each such incredible beings. And yet we can be so hard on ourselves sometimes. Today, I invite us to focus on what is truly magnificent about us rather than what we think we need to fix. I am a masterpiece and a work in progress. Let my voice be your voice within. I am a masterpiece and a work in progress. We want to work on ourselves. We want to grow. We want to grow in healthy ways. And to do so, we must come from a place of deep self-love and acceptance. We must know that we are perfectly imperfect and embrace what makes us who we really are, the divine within us. I am a masterpiece and a work in progress. We each have so many precious gifts to bring into this world. When we focus on our perceived weaknesses, however, we block our gifts from coming forth. The invitation is always to go within. Dive into your true self, beyond your ego mind that tells you you aren't good enough. Know that those thoughts aren't who you are. You are so much more than you can ever imagine. I am a masterpiece and a work in progress. You are a masterpiece and a work in progress. You are a soul sent here to live life fully. And only we, when you begin to start being kind to yourself, will you truly start living the joy that you are meant to feel. You are a masterpiece and a work in progress, just like everyone else. You are unique and you are connected to others all at once. Embrace your beauty and the journey that you are on to becoming wiser and more aware of your magnificence every day. Rest in the silence. Allow this truth to percolate throughout your being.
You are a masterpiece and a work in progress. Own this truth for yourself. I am a masterpiece and a work in progress. And as we move throughout the rest of our day, let this truth continue to resonate within your being, reminding you of who you are, who you are meant to be, and allow yourself to stretch and reach and grow into the ownership that you are an expression of the divine. For this truth and our ever greater realization of it, we say thank you, thank you God. And so it is, amen. This is the time in our celebration when we give of our ties and supporting gifts. And I invite you to be aware and conscious of the gift that you give today. May you know that you do so celebrating God's gifts and blessings in your life. And um, Susan, oh, never mind. Yeah, okay, that's good. Okay. Um, the basket is going to be passed by Kathy. So let's bless our ties and offerings together. There is no lack or limitation. Freely I give and freely that I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. Thank you. All right, a little change of plans on my song because of what you've said today. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yes, and um, I did sing for three hours last night for the first time for a while. Uh, so if okay. I sound a little, I overdid it maybe. Be the love you are. Be the love you are. Just like Master Jesus taught us, be the love you are. Shine the light you bear. Shine the light you bear. Just as Master Rumi taught us, Share the light you bear. Know the joy of life. Know the joy of life. Just as Master Jesus taught us, know the joy of life. Be the love. Be the love you are, just as Master Jesus taught us. Be the love you are. Oh, Hilary, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Could I have the um, Soul Calling slides, please? So this is the first of the new month, and we always talk about what power we're going to be focusing on for the month. And the power for the month of August is will. Will is the ability to choose, lead, and decide. The disciple is Matthew. And it represents the decision-making part of the brain. The corresponding color is silver. It's located in the front of the brain. And the affirmation is, I choose my good based on spiritual understanding. 
I choose my good based on spiritual understanding. Together, I choose my good based on spiritual understanding. And you may recall last month, the power was understanding. Understanding and will are located side by side. So clearly they are meant to work together. Okay, thank you. Also, I wanna just say that this is the time when we sing happy birthday to anybody that's having a birthday or if you're celebrating an anniversary in this month, it's happy special day. So uh, do we have any August birthdays? August birthdays going once. I know there are. Okay, not with us. All right, anyone celebrating anniversary? Yeah, 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 okay. Do you feel brave enough to stand up and let us sing to you? Okay, so it's happy special day instead of happy birthday. Happy special day to you. Happy special day to you. Happy special day, dear friends. Happy special day to you. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you, you're wonderful. God is blessing you now. Thank you for sharing your anniversary with us. I got chickens, kid. <laughs> okay, potluck Sunday. Last Sunday of the month is our potluck. Come and relax, enjoy good food. Last week was the first one we've had in almost two years. And we had a good time, did we not? We had a great, great time. So um, put it on your calendar, plan to be a part of that. All right. The meditation and healing circle starts Tuesday and Cheryl just went out to get the refreshment set up. But Cheryl McKernan is the one who's gonna be leading the meditation and healing circle on Tuesdays. It begins at 6.30. It's gonna be in the fireside room. Um, there's a suggested love offering of $10 per session show up even if you have no money. It's just an opportunity. Okay. Um, Life Journey Group, second and fourth Mondays, 6.15-ish to 8 o'clock-ish. Uh, so it'll be August 9th and August 23rd. Cindy Whedon is facilitating. She says, bring yourself with an open mind and a warm heart. Dinner in a movie. Now, this is a big deal. This is happening soon, friends. Um, Friday, October the 13th, August, I don't know where October came from, where, where, no, August the 13th at 6.30, cater dinner themed on the movie Murder on the Orient Express, um, Chef Vicki is the caterer, she's made some divine munchies for us today, they are, um, the ones with frosting on the top are carrot cake, the ones without are berry. So um, please use the tongs when you help yourself. And um, if you haven't put it on your Facebook page or your media page, your social media, would you please do that? Because this is a really, really fun event. It's the first time we've ever done it. Um, we, we sent information, I personally hand delivered it to 10 different um, churches in our area. And we really invite people to get involved because it's going to be a fun night. It is $20 per person. It is a fundraiser. So um, Miss Mary Angela is going to be out at the blue card table taking your reservation. We need to turn them, get them ready to turn into the caterer. Um, so please make your reservations today. Make sure that you ask other people, put it out there. This is a really important event for us. Yeah, it's here. It's here. Yes. The movie's going to be in here. The dinner is going to be out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it will be served. Yes, please. Yeah. No, no, she's a CIA. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. So what we're raising funds for is to fix our roofs so we don't leak this winter. So that's 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 the it. Okay, moving right along. Um, midweek meditation continues. You can tune in anytime from Facebook or on our from our webpage or website. And the silent unity prayer service is at eleven o'clock on Thursdays. We were doing it on Zoom because of our class on Zoom, but it will be starting back in the in the fireside room on Thursdays. So you're welcome to join. We love having you. If you cannot be here, you can call us and give us the prayer request, okay? The first week in September is when we actually start um, back in the in the fireside room, but you can call us because we're still doing the service. We do it personally, but um, I, I do still pray with people. So um, yes, by all means. Okay. Course in Miracles is every Sunday at 1145. Course in Miracles uses miracle minded thinking to focus on the principles of universal love and forgiveness. It's led by Joanne Bauman. And we're thankful for that. Indeed. Okay. Youth Ed begins in September, and we're really, really excited about that. If you're interested in helping out one or, uh, Sunday a month as a, as a helper for the Sunday school teacher, who's um, Miss Eileen, that would be peachy. Let me know. Thank you so much. Okay, Love in Action is going on. That is our opportunity to support the ministry in gifts beyond our regular tithe. Uh, this goes into our capital campaign, which is right now a roof, but it would also helps us create a wonderful celebration for our centennial that's coming up in October. And let us stand. Okay, so we're going to sing these words, which is like the second verse to America the Beautiful with Julie. And we'll do this before we form our circle, okay? So stand, I think we sing better when we're standing. Oh, beautiful, compassionate shores Where dreams and hope are born Where kindness and civility Can weather any storm shift the circle down this way we have that we have the capacity the technology we can do this good to see you okay i'm walking over walking over walking over walking over okay if you're not comfortable holding hands put your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you all righty the peace song
prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. All is well. And so it is. And so it is. All right. Come and have uh, coffee and conversation and priest and uh, see Mary Angela about making your reservations. Thank you. Okay.